Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to a rainy Moscow centre. Now I'm actually here today at Belaruskaya train station and I'm going to take you for a walk around the parade of trams on the 125th anniversary of trams here in Moscow. And I've got a special guest that's going to give us a little bit of information on a few of the trams. There's a lot to see and hopefully we're going to learn something new about trams here in Russia today. Now the actual walk around today is going to be me giving my insight into the trams but I've got a couple of train and tram enthusiasts and these are actually a couple of YouTube subscribers as well, also on my Telegram channel. And let's see who we've got. Who's the first person? Sasha. Sasha. Hi, everybody. And hi, my name is Max, and I am the very special guest that will provide the Russell with uh, overall uh, insight what's happening here. Thanks, guys. Now, my camera work isn't the best today because it's a little bit busy. So let's go and have a look at some trams together. So. Uh, welcome to Belaruski Railway Station Square and today we have a grand total of 11 trams right there dating from 1907 up until 2008 and uh, these are the trams from various eras the various time periods of Moscow trams they were the stars of the Moscow tram system before so right here is the very first tram car the Model F it was uh, manufactured in 1907 and was the very first Moscow tram car that, run with that ran with electric motors. So, uh, the, there's actually a little fact that uh, this car is the only road-going uh, Model F tram car in the world. Or not. Uh, there are actually two cars. One right here and one in San Francisco. It was gifted by the Soviet Union government for, uh, for the, uh, to commemorate the friendship between uh, the Soviet Union and the United States in the 80s. As we're walking around, one thing that's very noticeable is the amount of people here and the amount of people that are just interested in Russian and Soviet transport. Now, you can actually walk on board each of the trams but there is 30, 40 people in line for most of the trams. It's really just unbelievable. I mean, you're going to see it as we walk around a little bit more, just the sheer amount of people that are here in Belarus Square. It's amazing to see that there's such a love of public transport. So, we, uh, we already have seen uh, the older trams, so we uh, need to introduce you to the newer ones. The, these are uh, the KTM-1, the post-war Soviet tram that, that was made out of new materials like uh, steel, aluminium or uh, other metals because it's the first all-metal car that was produced in the Soviet Union. So, a uh, little fact about this tram that it was uh, smaller than the previous ones, so to increase capacity they uh, produced trailer cars for this, these trams. So the first car is motorized and the second one is not. It has no motors but it's, uh, its purpose is to only increase the capacity and make the maintenance cheaper. It's almost impossible to get up close to these trams and get on board them now. Of course there is the modernist trams in Moscow that are not even here today but these are all the old classic ones. Now this particular one, MTV82, is quite interesting because the actual metal that it's made out of is the same metal that they use for making aeroplanes. So essentially they're calling this the flying tram. So uh, the next tram after the flying tram is the improvement of the model. It was made in Riga because the uh, previous model was manufactured in the Moscow suburbs in Tushino and the factory was originally oriented for the airplane production so the previous tram was made out of aluminum so the technology hasn't changed but uh, the place of manufacturing did indeed change 
it was transferred to Rizhsky Wagon Strating Factory in Riga. And this tram had the first ever in uh, Soviet tram history manufacturing uh, automated ticket selling machines. The previous one had conductors and these, these, the Riga RVZ6 trams had automated ticking selling machines. So this particular tram we're going to go on board. Now of course you can actually go on all of them, but it's just very difficult with the amount of people and everybody wants to see the inside of these trams. Now you can't actually see these trams in a museum. They're only viewable at these tram parades like this. So a lot of people literally just want to come and feel nostalgic, sit on the chairs and you know really uh, remember the old times of Russia. How cool. It's actually got really nice comfy chairs, you know, for how old it is and, you know, some of the technology that they implemented. So as Max pointed out, this is the first tram that we've seen in all of them so far that's got the ticket validating machine. And you'd actually come on board and validate your own ticket right here, right on the machine. Not only that, you can also buy the ticket here. You can see the hole where the five kopeikas went the the money was inserted there the ticket was printed out there you press the button the ticket popped out and the some spares if you put uh, more than five kopeikas there the spares fell there is basically this ticket machine has no tickets but it functions so there's a pretty interesting plaque here on the inside of the tram and it talks about the restoration of this tram now it was actually taken out of service in 1966 and this one wasn't restored until 1999 and then put as part of this tram parade so we have seen so far the trams that were manufactured in the soviet union in the 30s 40s 50s and 60s but as the 70s approached the Soviet Union had uh, not much in progress of the trams, so they uh, they wanted to learn a lot in the tram building techniques. So they invite they invited the Tatra tram manufacturer from the Czechoslovakia that imported a lot of these in the Soviet Union in the 60s and 70s. This one in particular is the Tatra T2 model, the first to be ever imported in the Soviet Union. The Czechoslovakians imported a lot of tram models in the USSR, starting from the, uh, the T2 tram up to the famous one, the T3, that was basically a symbol of Moscow trams in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, uh, up until now, basically. The next model, the T6, it was a little bit newer. It had uh, an electric, uh, electric control system the modern uh, engines and everything and there's the next one the experimental t7 it was made narrower narrower because uh, some trams that were made before it couldn't fit in the older depots of moscow so this tram was manufactured specifically for this task i really do hope you're enjoying this type of video and to have a special guest on here uh, which is to something that i wouldn't know all the information about these trams and then we can see here now, after all these Czechoslovakian trams, the Russians came up with a new iteration. And the one thing that's very noticeable is these big, wide glass windows. And, you know, you could ride around the Russian cities and enjoy the view, not just use it as transport. It's amazing all the people sitting inside. And just such an interesting tram and how modern they became so quickly in terms of the history of all the trams fun fact uh, fun fact about this tram so uh, it was made with capacity in mind it was basically like a hammer easy to maintain all you need is to open some hatches pull some plugs and it will be running like it was brand new and also it was the very first tram to be manufactured in post-soviet russia 
Uh, it uh, was manufactured around 1990s and it was basically a symbol of Moscow trams in the 90s up to, until 2016. And this car, this car is the, was uh, the first one to be ever manufactured. It has a number of two, 100, oh, okay, of 1001. The one in this number means that it was the first one. Now where we actually are here on Belaruskaya Square, this is actually Sverskaya Street. And if we walk about 20 minutes, we'd be at the Kremlin. If we just keep going down this street right here. And then the actual tram lines where we've walked around and seen all the trams is an active tram route. Now the only model of tram that's not here today is the current most recent iteration of all of these different trams. And this is the, let's say, second youngest one of the fleet of trams and I'm gonna get a little bit of fun to fact on this tram for you right now. So uh, here's the little fact that Russell promised. Uh, this tram was nicknamed the Cobra because it was uh, the first tram to have the accordion between the sections. It was the first ever articulated tram to be uh, made in Russia. In fact it was made in cooperation with the Czechoslovakian guys and it was nicknamed the Cobra because it was long and big. Now I'm sure a lot of you around the world have perhaps ridden on trams before and have been on them and never really thought twice about the history of these trams and then for the Moscow government to bring these out to the center of the city and close off a lot of roads and a lot of the transport routes immediately nearby it's such a big deal and you can see by the amount of people that have come here today and how much interest there is everyone's you know scurrying to get on board each of the different trams as we walk around now it's incredibly loud but they've actually got a concert going on with people singing and doing a show and then they've closed down the entire square here by Belaruskaya train station and this place is incredibly busy any day of the week that you come and then for them to close it off for an event like this it's really a big deal now the other thing they've got set up here they've got field kitchens where you can actually get free food and they've got garechka and then hot tea and biscuits and there's all of these field kitchens set up it's a bit hard to see because there really is a crowd of people here but how nice is this if you're hungry and thirsty they put on a small buffet for everybody also part of the tram parade today they've also got a car exhibition or car rally with a lot of the older Russian models of cars and they go the whole way up the parking lot here it's really interesting seeing all of these Lada cars and then also the Moscovich and they got right up to the newest model the Moscovich 6 and then again you can see how many people have come to this event here it just kind of the line the whole way down and then this second car here the Moscovich 3 which I've actually been and seen at the factory where they make them here in Moscow I would really like to get a bit closer to some of these different vehicles and buses right here but it's nearly impossible to get even up to the ropes where they've got them cordoned off and you know for me it was really to come and see the trams but they've also got all of these other forms of public transport there's actually one of the zeal buses here and if you're from moscow they nickname this the alarm clock because of the loudness of the engine it would wake up everybody on all the streets where it's driven <laughs> now does anybody know that fun fact if you're from moscow perhaps you do let me know in the comments so we've done one full walk around all of the trams and we've come back to this very first model here and i just want to show you for a second how much interest there is and the line to even get inside this particular tram and it keeps going and going and going there's probably about 200 or 300 people in line just to go on the most 
a nostalgic tram in all of Moscow. Okay, so right on schedule, the actual trams are now leaving the Belaruskaya Square and they're now heading back to the depot and there's almost what I would call a guard of honor for all of the trams and there is a few thousand people gathered around this intersection and I was hoping to get a little bit closer but I'm a little bit worried just across the road right here now there isn't anybody literally crossing and there's somebody right in the middle of the street there they couldn't be in any more of a worse spot but I think that obviously nobody seems to be too bothered and of course if you watch the video from the beginning you know we gave a lot of tidbits and fun facts about the trams and it's so interesting there is a few people on board them which is quite interesting and I wonder how they managed to get a chance to ride one of them now I know I shouldn't do this and stand right in the middle of the road but I want to get up close with the trams now I did lose Max somewhere in the crowd and he said he wanted to go get a good spot to get photographs as well and literally this is the last one going by this is the snake I forgot the name of this one it had a nickname because of the concertina in the terrain somebody let me know I forgot the name and there we go everybody's waving them off I'm now in the absolute middle of the road and we're all going to scurry away from the road now. Okay everybody, so we're almost at the end of the video, but we thought, because we couldn't obviously ride the old trains as they were leaving back to the depot, we'd come and ride one of the most modern Moscow trams and we've come to Sokol Station and the guys are still here with behind me and we're going to go on one of the newest trams in all of Russia and I think there'll be a nice appropriate way to end the video. Now I'm not exactly sure which one we're gonna get on, but here is one of the trams now. And these are actually 2022 models. And these are the newest ones on the network here in Moscow. And these are solely made and produced in Russia and basically domestically made. They're very nice looking. I mean, obviously we've seen the older ones earlier in the video. You need to let me know in the comments. Do you like that more classic retro look? Or do you like this modern futuristic tram? The location where we've come to here is actually a turnaround point for the trams. And they basically begin and end their route here where we're standing. And we're gonna catch, I think, perhaps the one after this one. So what happens is, literally, this is a turnaround point, and there's this really cool domed building right here that the trams spin around, if that's the right word, and head off on their route. And this one's about to leave now. The driver's just basically having a couple of minutes break, and it will join the the other trams on the route and I think it's just about to leave and off it goes and it's just going to loop around here and then head on back up in the other direction and as another tram pulls up and the other one heads on off in the distance actually it went quite fast then Okay, uh, a little bit more technical info about these trams. These trams are manufactured by the uh, production company Transport Systems in uh, Tver region uh, in Russia. They are uh, one of the new trams they manufacture. This is the Vitez M model, which they started producing in uh, 2017 and up to 2022 the model itself evolved and now we have this beauty it is one of state-of-the-art trams as we call them nowadays because it is equipped with everything it has lights it has usb chargers it is low floor and it's very economic to operate 
And this is the actual tram that we're gonna ride, the number 15. And we're gonna go for a little bit of a joy ride. And I'm gonna show you some of the features of this tram. And the boys are already on board. And I'm gonna walk right on in front right here. And I thought I'd just give you a bit of a brief walkthrough of the tram. There's only a few people on it, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Nice and modern and a lot of seats. It's actually three trams in one. There's the forward cabin where we're just walking through. And then there's this connector right here. I think that's the best word as we head around the corner. And then there's the last part of the tram right the way at the back. You can see the boys there sitting up the front going for a ride. And there is plenty of technology in these trams. Of course, here is the space for people with wheelchairs and prams. They also have uh, USB charging right there. And these are, of course, heated for winter, so it's very nice and comfortable. For payment, you can do tap and go. You can also use your uh, Moscow Troika card. You can actually see under the seat where this lady is, the actual heaters that heat the actual cabin which is really nice and then there's the display to let us know the different stops and then the actual tram itself makes different stops on the route of course and as it does that there's actually the person doing the voiceover letting you know what stop we're at and what the next one is and it's essentially a replica of catching the metro in Moscow see here we're going along the route. Now I am holding on as I walk here, I should be sitting down, but I've got to get a little bit of uh, action shot as we're riding along. Now we're of course not able to go inside the cabin where the driver is, but you can see here all the technology and the screens. And essentially this driver's just sitting back and making sure Mostly that there's no cars and other vehicles that come onto the line because obviously there's active roads as the tram's going along. It's very, very technologically advanced, these digital screens right here. And then as we look back, we see now from when we got on, it was very quiet and the tram now is pretty much full. So we decided to get out of the tram that we're on to like literally change the size of the street to ride back towards Moscow. And if you're interested in a little bit of a fun fact with these, they can reach up to 60 kilometers an hour. And even on the weekend like this, they can definitely move at a fair pace. And we can see now the tram going the other direction. So basically, 60 k's an hour. Now we all think of trams just going so slowly, but it's really quite incredible the speed they can pick up. And just like that, we're on the tram heading back towards Moscow. This actual route that we're on is a circle route essentially, but it has a start and end point and then a turnaround point. And we're actually going over a bridge right now you can see here on the left hand side there's actually a water ski park. The actual water is frozen over as another tram goes flying by. And then you can see off in the distance a little bit hard but Spartak Stadium. And then here we are in the tram. Again this one actually is very nice and quiet, nice and smooth, very nice experience. And we've got a few more stops until we reach our final destination. Okay everybody, so we're about two stops from where we're going to get off now. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today, seeing the tram parade at Belaruskaya station. And we thought it was just cool to come on a tram, or the most modern one in Moscow, for a little bit of a trip, uh, like we're just doing right now. <laughs> We've been chatting so much when we're not filming that I'm lost for words when I do the ending of the video. Now, what's the thing that they need to do if they like the video? What's the key thing to do? 
th a thumbs, a thumbs up. Subscribe and press the bell button. Subscribe and press the bell button. Thanks, guys. Yeah, if you like the video uh, and you want to comment about it, let us know. Do you want to see more transport videos? Let me know in the comments. If you want to join me on Telegram, the Telegram link is right here. And if you want to see another video, it's going to come up right in front of these guys right now. You, perhaps you can watch an older video and not that you haven't seen on the channel already. Okay, everybody, I'm off on another adventure. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs>